Hello learners. Welcome to this NIOS studio. I am Dr. Manisha Vadhwa from Aditi Mahavidyalaya, University of Delhi. Today's topic of presentation is understanding environment and its role in development of children. For learning about this topic, let's first understand what is environment. Environment is world around us. It is from ourselves it is starting from ourselves to the family and then moving to community and world around it is both biotic and abiotic component of environment it is both living and non living things around us if you close your eyes you will visualize that everything which is around us constitute our environment environment word is derived from french word envire which means to encircle or surround thus all that surrounds us or the world around us constitute our environment it includes the natural environment and socio cultural environment it has no limits it is whole continuous and indivisible it is common to all living organisms plants animals and humans to elaborate what do we mean by continuous and indivisible it means that world does not come into separate patches for children imagine a child who is born for him or her world is not divided into physics chemistry biology or geography history economics but it is a continuous and indivisible process and this environment is common for everybody including plants animals all other microorganisms and humans so environment is a whole to everyone the air the water rocks plants animals are as much part of environment as we human are this is what we share with all living organisms so in a way if i pollute my environment then i am polluting it for all living beings whether living on land water or air so environment is very important to all of us to all living beings to survive environment can be considered as a composite of different aspects for humans let's concentrate on humans in this particular topic for humans imagine a child in a class for her environment is her class environment environment is her school environment family environment community state nation world so starting from the individual going to further away it constitute the environment now in that environment let's see different aspects of environment natural environment includes abiotic factors which are non living factors in the environment which are air water soil rocks and landforms then natural environment also has biotic elements which are plants animals and microorganisms microorganism i hope you know what microorganisms are these are small in invisible bacteria viruses these are constitute microorganisms then plants animals microorganism they are all interdependent on each other and they have their basic necessities like air water and nutrients these interdependencies lead to variety of interactions between organisms and their environment the simplest example can be a simple food chain like snake is eating a rat so snake is dependent on rat rat is eating grain so rat is dependent on plants so animals and plants they are all interdependent on each other and they all need air water and nutrients to survive then we come to human made environment the human made environment is what we have made the world is as we see today it was not like this 20 years earlier which means we have done some changes to make it a more convenient place to adjust to the rising population to adjust to the rising traffic so we are changing this environment this environment is human made environment it is twisted by humans according to our own requirements it includes roads buildings industries dams and other structures which provides goods and services to humans it is in a way to provide better facilities to human but there are times when we are building dams or metro tracks or train tracks then we are also harming environment so one has to see with caution 
that creating a human weight environment are we disturbing our natural environment or not then comes the socio cultural environment individual family community religious educational institutes economical political institution make our social environment it is usually from the family that most key activities of society are carried out and one learns to live as a member of society for example one individual is born in a particular family the customs traditions of that family becomes a social cultural environment of that individual culture is shaped by the natural environment and the interactions between individual in a community culture differs from community to community and society to society our cultural characteristics like the food we eat the clothes we wear our traditions and norms are shaped by our natural environment for example people living in eastern india they eat more rice as compared to wheat people living in north india they eat more wheat as compared to the rice so this difference in food habits what we eat is also governed by our cultural practices a family originally related to let's say north east of india if that family comes to delhi then probably they will like to have more rice because of their cultural characteristics or because of their family uh, food habits so culture is important then comes the socio cultural environment the values traditions norms customs arts history folklore practiced and followed by communities of individuals make up the socio cultural environment in a nutshell environment is everything that surrounds me of which i am also a part i cannot say that you know i live in isolation no all individuals they live in communities they live in societies families so their environment is integrated environment is defined as a complex of climatic biotic social and edific which are edific is produced or influenced by soil factors subsystems of the environment that act upon organism and determine its form and survival it is it therefore includes everything that may directly affect the behavior of a living organism or species including light air water soil and other living beings the subject matter of environment thus permeates all subjects and disciplines it transcends all ages and stages of life to elaborate on this when i say that it permeates all subjects and discipline i mean that environment is part of all subjects for example if i am taking an example of water then in physics i am studying about physical properties of water in chemistry i am studying about bonding between hydrogen and oxygen in biology i am studying why water is essential for life so i ca- you can see that water when it is studied in different subjects have different aspects but as a whole this is a concept of water similarly if i read about water in geography i may be reading about dams i may be reading about hydroelectricity or irrigation facilities if i am reading about water in history probably i am reading about you know how different wars have fought for water how kings living in palaces have store have capacity to store waters so a concept is studied from different perspectives and in environment we combine everything and it is there as a whole and it is very important also because children don't see world uh, fragmented or compartmentalized into different subjects they see the world around for them it is a continuous process the second point which i am trying to raise here is that it transcends all ages and stages of life environment is important at all ages beginning from birth to young children to middle person middle aged person and to old people for them it is important it is important for all ages and at all stages of life remember environment is not primary science it is not only science i should say it is not only social science environment is not only environmental education environment is also not 
combination of science and social science. Environmental studies is combination of science, social science and environmental education. I can say that environment studies is combination or integration of science, social science and environmental education. Any now coming to the learner in this environment. As learner grows up in it, learner learn from it. Learner is dependent on it. Learner also contributes to it and influences it. Just as it influences us, everybody. This influence begins from the moment we are born and it continues throughout our life. The world of child begins with an awareness of its own body and gradually expands in ever widening circles to an exploration of the immediate surroundings, family and home, neighborhood, school and beyond. So imagine the child is born, environment is the family, from family to home, then to neighborhood. Uh, when he is 5 years old or she is 5 years old, she goes to school. Then schools or school also becomes part of the environment. After school, community also becomes part of the environment. After school, if she goes to college to some other state, then that state also becomes part of the environment. So, gradually, learner, environment of the learner expands, starting from family, then to home, neighborhood, school, community and beyond. Learning takes place first and foremost in the home and the family. When children join school, learning continues to take place, not only in school, but also at home and within the community. That is why when children, they join school at the age of five, they have so much information, they have so much knowledge about different kinds of phenomena happening in environment, different kinds of plants, trees are available around our, in our environment. So children, they don't join school as a blank slate. They already have knowledge of their environment because of their continuous interaction with the environment, because of their experience with the environment. The immediate environment is the primary context to which the child relates. It includes not just physical structures and outdoor spaces, but equally the social and cultural world of stories and songs, festivals and get-togethers, family and community celebrations and occasions. All these contribute to the learning of a learner in that environment. If a particular child is born in a particular culture, a child will hear stories of, uh, you know, of that culture. So, those will become a learning for that learner in that environment. Another child born in some other culture will definitely not have those stories or songs in that culture. So, people are different because they are born in different cultures, their environment is different, their learning environment is different. So, environment contributes to the learning of an individual. Valuable learning takes place through interactions with immediate environment. Every day, children experience the natural environments which are seasons, heat, rain, cold, the sky, sun and moon, the different aspects of water, plants and animal. So the immediate environment becomes the starting point of learning. Children, especially young children, have a natural desire to learn and to make sense of the world around them. It is critical that they are provided with environment that enables and support this learning. For example, you see, when child comes to classroom, child has so many questions to ask and those questions come from their experience. So as a teacher, we should answer their questions. Some interesting questions which I can recall here, a five-year-old child asked that banana does not have seeds. So how do we grow banana plant? And I was observing that class, the teacher was perplexed. She didn't know how to answer that question of you know, a question asked by class one children. So, these questions come from their environment and that is why we say that learning starts from the environment. And as a teacher, we should give them an enabling environment. We should support them in their learning. NCF 2005 also said that, this, uh, that learning in early year 
must hence be directed by child's interests and priorities, should be contextualized by his or her experiences rather than being structured formally. It means that starting point of uh, any learning begins from children's interest and priorities. A class of 50 students, to all 50 students may have different interests and priorities. So as an active teacher, you should group those students according to their interest and let them pursue their interest. For instance, or to elaborate further, I can say that, let's say that 10 children, they are curious about plants. They can read, they can observe plants, they can record their observation by, about plants, they can ask questions about plants. Another 10 students may be interested in a post office near that school, so they can explore that post office, they can visit the post office, they can see what kind of people are there, what kind of work those people are doing or what kind of people come to post office, what is their job in that post office. Another 10 children may be interested in flowers, some other may be interested in animals. So th those children can observe animals, they can record about animals, they can ask questions about animals, they can talk to different people who have pets. So in a way, you know, if you do like this, you are starting their learning with their interest. So in such situations, learning become meaningful and learning become interesting to the child. Secondly, it should be contextualized, which means that anything which is there in that context should be addressed. If a child is living in desert, maybe child is not aware of the concept of flood. So learning has to be contextualized. If a child is living in a coastal area, child may not be familiar with desert. So one has to start from their own context and then move to wider spaces. So as a teacher, we have to see the context of children coming to my class. Then only I can structure their learning. For example, if ch children from deprived background are, are coming to my class, first question I ask in the class, that do you have milk in, at, in the morning? So this is not a valid question because probably these children do, don't have access to milk in the morning. Probably their family only buys half liter of milk only for tea. So one has to see the context of children coming to the class. Going further, any an enabling en environment for children would be that is rich in stimulation and experiences that allows children to explore, experiment and freely express themselves and one that is embedded in social relations that given them a sense of warmth, security and trust. Uh, to elaborate this, I am saying enabling environment which means any environment which is supporting their learning. It is not contradicting learning, it is supporting their learning. Children, you know, their learning should be supported by the teacher. Secondly, there should be stimulation for learning. You know, there should be some activities which create interest of children. You have to, you know, draw their attention to certain things which has happened or certain observations which they can see. For example, recently there was a lunar eclipse. So if you are teaching class 5, then before the eclipse you can, you know, guide children, create their interest, arouse their curiosity that what is an eclipse? Why, what is this lunar eclipse? Why all newspaper TV channels are talking about lunar eclipse? What is this red moon, blue moon? There are, these were the kinds of words used for that eclipse. So you have to arouse their curiosity and then also answer their curiosity and properly guide them how to go ahead in their you know, learning, how they can proceed further, where to explore, what to explore, how to experiment, how to freely express themselves within the class, within the group, in the family. So this enabling environment will support their learning, will encourage them to learn further. Perspective of environmental studies are interdisciplinary, which means, you know, environment is seen as, you know, coming from different subjects, 
different subject areas. Perspective of AVS is also thematic and integrated in the sense that there is one central theme and it is woven around that theme. It is central. Why central? Because we see concepts as they are. We do not see concepts in disciplines. For example, look at this chart, web chart. Uh, we call it as web chart, concept map. You can see that water is there in the center, which is the central theme. And there are different aspects of water which can be addressed. Like water, it is, you know, water is used as life forms, properties of water like solubility, whether things sink, whether things float, then festivals and cultural practices, traditional water systems and mapping of water resources. These comes from the historical and geographical perspective, access and distribution to water, discriminatory practices that there are discrimination for water, then water pollution, conservation of water. These comes as environmental perspective and then water bond disease which are from the health perspective. So, let us summarize today's class. One, environment is a complex and dynamic system. Second, environment includes natural, human made, social cultural aspects. Third, the subject matter of environment permeates all subjects and disciplines. Next, the environment provides the primary context for a child's learning. Next, the child learning, child need to be given adequate opportunities to interact with their local environment and to build their understanding based on those interactions and experiences. Only opportunities given by children will help students to learn in that environment. Thank you.